speak to you. I know this is a big Sunday because we're fixing to go to Thanksgiving and I'm so thankful to be here this morning. I wanted to share with you something from the Gospel of Matthew, the 13th chapter, Matthew chapter 13. I bring you greetings from the Church of Christ at Kwatwabe. That is where my family and I worship at the moment. I was so looking forward to come and see you this morning, and I'm grateful and thankful to be here. I wish I could preach in Isi Zulu and have somebody interpret for me, but I'm sure that there is no one with that gift here this morning. So I'm going to try and preach in English. Now, I need to warn you that I do not preach in English where I come from. I preach in Isi Zulu. So if you have a hard time following my accent, just bear with me. But you might learn something from what I have to say this morning. In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13, Jesus is teaching about parables. And I read somewhere that about 80% of his teaching was in parables. So it means parables give us a great teaching and a lot of teaching of Jesus Christ. But in Matthew chapter 13, verse 44, we read about a hidden treasure. Matthew chapter 13, verse 44, the Bible reads, Again, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and hid. And for joy over it, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. I grew up in a village called Ngabeni in Guazulu, Natal, South Africa. I remember in my fifth grade, coming back from school, finding this one. Now with you it would be a one dollar bill. In South Africa it was a one rand bill. Found this bill, ran home, I was living with my grandma. Now a one dollar bill will give us at least three bread, loaf of, loaves of bread in South Africa at that time. Took that dollar bill, ran home, showed it to my grandmother. Excited as I was, I thought she would say, go back to the shop, go get some bread. And she takes that dollar bill and she just keeps it and says that maybe somebody will come to whom this belongs and will have to give it back to them. There I was waiting for grandma to give back this money so that I can go back to the shop and get bread. But we stayed for seven days, nobody showed up. And by the way, we did not have bread at home at that time, all those seven days. But that just shows you what kind of a lady she was. She didn't want us to use that money, and then somebody shows up and wants to claim their money. But what a joy it was when those seven days were over and we had to go and buy some bread. As I was reading this parable, I had to imagine this man going down the road or wherever in the valley or wherever he was, he finds this treasure. And the Bible says he hides it again. Now I had to ask myself, why did he hide it again? But the Bible tells us that he hides it and goes and sells everything he had. And if I read the scripture correctly, it says he did that because of the joy that he had. Sold everything he had, went back and bought that land so that that treasure could be his. And that's what I want us to think about this morning. One of the reasons why my wife was looking forward to come with me to the States at this time of the year is because she sure enjoyed the turkey when we used to be here during Thanksgiving time. And the United States is the only country that I know that celebrates that holiday. 
in South Africa, we have got more holidays than you, but we do not have one where we just sit down and thank God for everything that he has done for us. And for some reason, I think that is why this is such a, such a blessed nation. If out of your busy lives, you can just pause and thank God. But this morning, I want us to thank God for the treasure that we found. Now, whenever I talk about this parable or any parable, whenever Jesus says the kingdom of heaven is like, we need to think about what is the kingdom. Now, I know this is a Bible-believing church because I've spent some time with Father Rod and I know that he preaches the Bible. And if he does, as an elder, I know that all the other elders are the same and the minister here uh, preaches the Bible. So you will go with me a little bit in the Old Testament, in the book of Daniel, chapter 2, King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon invaded Jerusalem and took some Jews as captives back to Babylon. And the first captives among them were Daniel and his friends. At his palace, one of the days, he had this terrifying dream. The Bible tells us that he dreamt a big image, huge image. And that image was divided into four parts. First part being the head of gold. Second part, the chest and arms of silver. Third part, belly and thighs of bronze. And the last part was the legs of iron and feet of iron mixed with clay. But as he was looking at this image, there was a stone cut out without human hands and it crushed that image. But that stone grew and became a huge mountain. And this dream terrified the king so much that he called all his magicians to tell him what the dream meant. But he didn't just say, give me the interpretation. He told them to tell him what he had dreamt. And none of them could do that. And so Daniel comes and tells the king what he had dreamt and he gives him the interpretation. Now it is the interpretation that I'm interested in because the dream was about the four world kingdoms. First one being that of Babylon, second one being that of Medopatia, the third one, the Greece, the fourth one, that of the Romans. But during the time of the Roman kings, the God of heaven would establish a kingdom. That's what Daniel told the king. And it is that kingdom that Daniel told the king about the fifth kingdom. If you take away the worldly kingdoms that the king saw in the big image and the stone that was cut out without human hands, that became a huge mountain the Bible says that was the kingdom. God will establish a kingdom that will never be destroyed. All great kingdoms have perished. But this kingdom that God will establish would never be destroyed. That's what Daniel 2 verse 44 tells us. And then when we fast forward to the New Testament, John the Baptist comes along, and I always tell my students that it's John the Emesa, in case somebody is confused about him being John the Baptist. John the Emesa comes and preaches that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It is the same kingdom that Daniel prophesied about many years ago. John comes and says it is at hand. And sure enough, Jesus comes, he teaches his disciples to pray in Matthew chapter 6. He tells them to pray for this kingdom to come. That the will of God be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
So whenever there are people on earth doing the will of God, we will know that the kingdom of God has come. In the book of Mark chapter 9, verse 1, the gospel according to Mark chapter 9, verse 1, Jesus tells his disciples that there are some of you standing here who will never see death until they see this kingdom coming in power. Daniel chapter 2 tells us about the coming kingdom that will never be destroyed. John the Baptist tells us about the kingdom that is at hand. Jesus comes and tells us about the kingdom that the disciples needed to pray for. And then he tells them in Mark chapter 9 verse 1 that they will not die until this kingdom comes. And I'm standing here today telling you that that kingdom is the same kingdom that Jesus says, it is like a man who found a hidden treasure. He took that treasure and hid it again, went and sold everything he had, bought that field so that the treasure could be his. I know that is right because in Matthew 16, verse 18 and 19, Jesus said, upon this rock I will build my church. And then in verse 19, he says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom. So that tells us that the church will be opened by the keys of the kingdom. And Peter did that in Acts chapter 2. And in 41, 3,000 people were baptized, and that's when the kingdom of Christ was established in Jerusalem, Acts chapter 2, 33 AD. So, once that kingdom was established, the Lord has been adding people into that kingdom until he returns. He will be continue to add people as long as we continue to preach, as long as we continue to share that story with the people. But there are five points that I want us to think about this morning, and I promise I'll, I'll let you just before lunch, I'll let you go. <laughs> The first point that I wanted us to think about was the fact that this man, when he finds that treasure, the Bible says he hides it again. Why would he hide it? First of all, it was not his. Secondly, it's a treasure. Instead of just taking it and going, he decides to hide it and buy the whole field, the entire field, so that the field will be his and the treasure will be his. That tells me that this kingdom, brethren, is not something that one can just open the TV channel and then they are talking about this kingdom. Something that you can just walk into a grocery store and your neighbor is talking about this kingdom. Something that you can be going to work and your colleague is telling you about this kingdom. It, it, there is some element of this thing being hidden. One of my friends said, if God wanted us to go to heaven, why is this thing so difficult? It's like he didn't want us to figure it out and, and, and know it. But I believe that it is so because God wants people to seek and he promises that, them, that they will find. So if we seek his will, if we seek his kingdom, we shall find it. So what God wants us to be able uh, to seek his will. But in Matthew, if you will read with me, in Matthew chapter 11, Jesus Christ is thanking his father. Matthew 11, verse 25 and 26. Verse 25, Jesus says, Matthew chapter 11. At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and have revealed them to the birds. 
I want to bring to you, brethren, this morning that there are things that are hidden to the people that think that they are wise, people that think they know, people that think that they've got this, they have everything under control. And Jesus Christ thanks God for having hidden his will to those people. But in that very same prayer, Jesus says, but you have revealed it to those who are children, to those who have the mindset, the mentality of children. In other words, to those who are humble enough to take their time and listen to the word of God and be willing to change and be willing to let go of some stuff in their lives and be willing to sell so that this treasure might be theirs. And this morning I just wanted to say, brethren, that it was not because we were wise. It's not because we were reading the Bible so much. But it is by grace that we have been saved. But at the same time, we need to continue to be humble for God to continue to reveal his will in our lives. Because the minute we become arrogant and we think we've got this, we think, this, we, think we have everything under control, it is at that time that this thing becomes hidden again in us. And that is why you have people even in the church who don't know whether they are coming or going. One minute they are outside, one minute they are inside. One minute they are living like the world lives, one minute they want to be Christians. You will think that they found this treasure, but they don't realize that they have found this hidden treasure. I want to say, brethren, it was the grace of God that you and I, while people are dying out there, somebody took their time to study the Bible with you and you obeyed. And for that, you need to be thankful. If I was living in America today and I didn't have all the big trucks, big car, everything that a lot of you have, I would still be thankful for the fact that God brought me into his kingdom. If you are wondering what you need to be thankful for this season, just be thankful that you are in the kingdom of God. It is a great treasure. It is worth you selling everything. It is worth you losing everything. It is worth you losing a friendship if that friendship is taking you out of the kingdom. It is worth you losing a relationship if that relationship is driving you out of the church. It's worth it, my brother. It's worth it, my sister. We should be grateful. We should be thankful that we are members of the kingdom of Christ this morning. And that is why, if there's anyone, by any chance, who is here, and they are not yet members of the church, members of the kingdom, they need to get that right today. Because what a joy it will be when we all get to heaven and we sing hallelujah. I joke about we will be singing in Zulu. Just to make you realize that it will not be English. But I know it won't be Zulu. But I look forward to that language. Because nobody will have to teach us that language. We will just know what to say. But you just hang around, hang in here in the kingdom, and that day will come. But I've got a few points again before I sit down. I see our same leader is already here. Another thing I wanted you to think about was the fact that when the Bible says this man sold everything, 
to buy that land so that the kingdom could be his, the treasure could be his. What have you sold this morning? What did you lose? If you claim that you have found this treasure, my question to you this morning is what have you sold? What, what did you lose? What are you willing to lose for the sake of this treasure? And I'll give you 30 seconds to think about that. If we are not willing, brethren, to lose anything, if we are not ready to lose anything for the sake of the kingdom, not for the sake of your family, not for the sake of your friends, not for the sake of your employment, your job, or whoever, or anything, if you are not willing to lose anything for the sake of the kingdom, just think again. Maybe, maybe you have not found this treasure. Because if you have found this treasure, it drives you, it forces you to sell everything, to, to lose something. And I'm not talking about going out of here and go sell your trucks, sell your houses. And I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the stuff that is keeping you out of the church. I'm talking about the things that are causing you, your soul, I'm talking about things that will make you to miss that joy that we are all looking forward to. And if there are such things in your life this morning, you need to think about selling them. Give it up. Give it away. It's worth it. It is worth it. This kingdom, this treasure, is worth losing everything. I don't believe that this, man, this means that we have to go and sell everything we have. But it simply means that if there is anything hindering you this morning, standing in your way to be fully here, to be fully involved in what the church is doing here in Elk City, you need to give that stuff, the stuff away. Because, brethren, the kingdom is about us being involved is about us doing something for the sake of the kingdom. And if this morning you are not doing anything except coming here, partaking from the Lord's Supper and going back home, you need to think again. If you have really found this treasure, because God is looking for people who are willing to get their hands dirty for the sake of the kingdom. Even today, God is just looking for that one soul that is willing to give their lives and get their hands dirty for the sake of the kingdom. And if we are not willing to do that, brethren, I worry that our labor might be in vain, that our coming here might be in vain. We need to get busy. There is a song that you sing in the English hymns that says, to the work, to the work. I love it. I can't sing. I, will, I couldn't sing for, for my life. Uh, but I love it. We need to get to the work because people out there are dying. And I know, not just in South Africa, yeah, there are people behind your back, in your backyard who are dying. There are people that you work with who don't know this treasure. There are people that you go to school with who don't know this treasure. There are people in your neighborhood who have not found this treasure, but it will take you to say something. And just maybe God will open their eyes, open their hearts, and they will see, they will find this treasure. As I close,
there is a sense of ownership that we find in this parable. That this man did not just want to have this treasure for one or two days and then forget about it. He wanted to own it. He wanted it to be his. That is why he decided that he will buy that all, all that land so that both the field and the treasure would be his. And I wanted to close, brethren, by saying you need to feel like you have shares, if we're talking business language, in this kingdom. You know the people who have got shares, every time they woke up in the morning, they look at the stock market because they're worried that they've lost something. Do you, do you know what I'm talking about? Jesus said, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Remember that? So, if people do not care what's happening in the church, do not care whether the truth is being taught in the pulpit, do not care whether so-and-so is coming to church or not, they don't care what's happening. Is there a sense of ownership in those people? The reason why this man bought this land is because he wanted to own. And we need to have that sense, brethren, that the church, if people, if I were, I was in Durban, South Africa, and I read in the news that the Church of Christ in Elk City is involved in voodoo, witchcraft, whatever, <laughs> that bad. I'll be thinking about all of you not just the minister, not just the elders, all of you. Because my take is that all of you are involved in what is happening in the church. God wants us to feel that, feel like we are owning this thing. If people are cursing the church of Christ, they are cursing me. If people are cursing the kingdom of Christ, they are cursing me because I am part of the kingdom. So if something bad is happening here, it should hurt all of us. And if something good is happening, all of us should rejoice because we are part of this, we are involved with this. We're not doing this part-time. We are doing this full-time. We have purchased the land. We own this treasure. Now as I sit down this morning, do you feel the sense of ownership? Do you feel that you own you 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 are part of what is happening here? And if you have a little doubt in your mind, you need to fix that today. If there's something that you are not willing to lose this morning for the sake of the kingdom, you need to sort that out today. If you are not part of the body of Christ, you need to get up be baptized in the waters of baptism for the forgiveness of your sins, then the Lord will aid you into this kingdom. We need to do, do these things, brethren, while we still have a chance. Because tomorrow might be too late. And as you think about Thanksgiving and giving thanks to the Lord and, and you're going to be with your families, your relatives, and enjoying that nice turkey, be thankful that you are part of the body of Christ. Be thankful that you are in the kingdom of Christ. It's not the same thing, brethren. We have a lot of our preachers, a lot of our brethren preaching that you can find Christians everywhere you go. It's not true. If that was the case, Jesus was not going to say, upon this rock I will build my church. And with those words, may God bless you. And as we stand up and sing, if you have anything that you need, please visit some of our elders and come forward as we stand up and sing.